Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this webinar. My name is Martin Damon, and today I will cover the basics of using our new Truck Science app. The app is available in two editions, the Truck Science Sales Tool for truck manufacturers, dealers, and operators, and then the Axle Weight Calculator, which is used by bodybuilders and trailer manufacturers. This uh, session today is for everyone who, who still needs to make the switch from Transolve to the new Truck Science app. And also for those who have recently started using the new version, but would like to just go through the basics again. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, we look forward to your questions and feedback. I'm joined uh, by my colleague Jens Helberg. Jens will be moderating the chat and answering your questions as we go through the session. Okay, so what we'll cover in the session today. Uh, the, uh, so in short, we'll go through all the basics of using the new app. Uh, we'll learn how to configure a vehicle with body equipment and payload. We'll run a simulation over a typical route. Then we'll determine total cost of ownership and we'll do a comparison with uh, vehicles of different brands. In general, uh, just getting the most of all the features that are available in there. So to, to demonstrate uh, the features of that, I'll take you through a live demo now with a sample calculation. So for the calculation, we'll use a, an eight tonner. We'll add a taut liner body and a fairing plus a tail lift. Then we'll run it over the route to predict fuel consumption and trip time and work out the CPK. So let's get started. I'll change to, I'll just share my screen with you. So to log into the app, we recommend that you do this from our homepage, truckscience.com. You'll find the login button at the top uh, right of the screen. And when you log into the app, the app will open at the vehicle selection screen, which will show you all the different makes of vehicles that you have in the database. Just to explain this for, for the dealers, because in our audience today, we have uh, dealers, operators, and bodybuilders. Uh, for the dealers in the past, with, with, uh, when using Transolve, you've only been able to access uh, your own vehicles to do calculations. In the new app, you will also be able to open your competitive vehicles, but you'll only be able to do a mass distribution on your competitive vehicles. So that, that is a new feature of the online version. So we've added a few handy features here to make it easier for you to find the vehicle that you are looking for. Uh, for example, I'll click on UD Trucks, Krona, 4x2, and that will give me a list of vehicles to choose from. I can scroll through the list. I can look at the columns, for example, the vehicle code, the wheelbase, the spec date, and decide which vehicle I'm looking for. To start all over again, I can click on Reset. Maybe I'll show you a slightly different method. That would be to, to use the search by keyword option. And I'll type in here, Hino 1627. And you'll see how that narrows down my choices. And I'll add the vehicle code, which is EK5, and that leaves me with one vehicle. The code, the wheelbase, and the spec date. I'll click on the vehicle to open it. And the vehicle will open with the graphic dimensions and masses from the spec sheet uh, provided by the manufacturer. To give you an overview of the toolbar at the top, I'll start off by uh, going full screen on the app. And I'll just run you through the different modules. So by default, we open to the configuration module. To the right, you'll find the performance module. And for bodybuilders and trailer manufacturers, even though you don't have access to these modules, uh, we encourage you to stay for that part of the session. I'm sure you'll find it interesting. The costing module and the specification comparison module. But for our exercise, we'll start in the configuration module. And I'll start again with a bit of a layer, an overview of the layout of this module. So we've got the dimensions, and at the bottom, we've got all the masses. What's important to note is the chassis mass and the fuel and crew. 
So in the case where a manufacturer only provides the chassis mass with no fuel and no driver, we add the fuel and crew to give a total unladen of the vehicle with a full tank of fuel and the driver. At the bottom, you've got the permissible front, rear, and total. And then to the left, we have what we call a compliance scorecard. This is a very handy feature to ensure that you're not overloading the vehicle or going outside the legal dimensions. So as we build our body and, and add our equipment and payload, we'll keep an eye on the scorecard just to make sure that we are complying with all aspects. On the left, we have the menu where we can make changes. I'm going to show you different uh, methods of accessing the menu. So for starters, let's say, for example, I wanted to change the wheelbase. You'll notice that the wheelbase is a hyperlink blue dimension. If I click on it, it opens the menu to the wheelbase and allows me to make changes. So just to run through some basics of uh, each attribute of the vehicle, you'll, you'll find an information icon. So if you're not sure what something on the screen is all about, don't be afraid to click on it and uh, read up all about it. And uh, so here we'll explain, specify the wheelbase, a center of front axles to center of rear axles. So there's a good explanation given for every attribute. To the left of that, I'm sorry, to the right, uh, we have the lookup table where we, where we show the guidelines provided by the manufacturers. So the minimum wheelbase and the maximum wheelbase, that's the envelope uh, we get from the product managers. So we can choose that if we wanted to, or we can override the wheelbase to make a change. So you can click on that override, type in a new dimension, or use the up and down tickers to increase the wheelbase. So as I increase it, you'll notice the wheelbase changing at the bottom. To revert back to the default wheelbase, simply deselect the override and we'll go back to the five and a half meter wheelbase. You can also drag this uh, menu around the screen to ensure that it doesn't obscure an area of the screen that, are, that we want to look at. To close the menu, simply click on the cross in the top right corner. So that's how you can access the menu, either via the links or you can click on the menu button. We'll start off now by adding our body. So I'll go to the next option, which is the vehicle body. I'll click on the menu. You'll see the different types of bodies that we cater for. And if you don't find the body that you're looking for, you could also look for it under other. This is a catch-all uh, for any body types that we don't uh, categorize uh, in the uh, as an icon here. For our exercise, we'll add a taut liner. And uh, there are different methods now that we can apply to adding a body. I'll show you uh, three different methods. And you'll see uh, in our list, we have, uh, for example, a taut liner template and a sample seven and a half meter taut liner. You can identify these items by the icons. So you can match the icon of the first two to template. So those are templates. These templates are our bodies that you can make a lot of changes to like length, height, and the mass. Uh, sample uh, or public uh, data, you'll recognize with the sort of world icon, are products that have been uh, added by bodybuilders, trailer manufacturers, fridge suppliers. So it's standard equipment that you can select. Um, and you can also you can filter it by clicking on the public uh, menu here. I'll I'll start off with the sample calculation or anything published by uh, bodybuilders, but I'll also show you how you can import a DXF. So let's let's start off with the sample seven and a half meter taut liner. There are obviously various advantages and disadvantages to the different types of bodies or methods of adding a body. If I add a body provided by a bodybuilder, there, there are very few things I can change. So for example, if I want to make a change, I can click on the graphic of the body to open the menu again. And you'll notice I can only change the description and the position of the body. I cannot change the length or the height. 
But the advantage being that all the dimensions are as per the bodybuilder's spec and the, the weights are also correct. Let's uh, change the position of the body. What I'll do is I'll just move the screen down a bit and I'll override from back of cab to body and I'll just push it out. So increase it to 200 or 300. So this is one way of changing the body gap. Or I can deselect the override to go back to the default. I'll close this menu. Another way of uh, changing the, the cab gap would be to click and drag the body. So what, what you'll notice when I drag the body back is how the weights table at the bottom updates in real time. So I'll drag the body back and you'll see it, the recalculation taking place in the table. I'll drag it back quite far. Notice that the scorecard at the bottom left shows a red cross for dimensions. So warning us that the rear overhang will probably be illegal. And, it, and when I drop the body to try and place it there, the program will automatically place it such that the rear overhang is at the maximum. So 60% of wheelbase for rear overhang. So we do prevent you from exceeding the uh, rear overhang or the legal limit there. So, for example, if I want to undo this change now, this is also a new feature that was not available in Transolve. I'll click on the undo on the toolbar, and the body will go back to the default position. Okay, that's the first method for adding a body. Let's remove this body. So I'll click on the body again, and I'll use the scissors to remove it. And then we'll use the next option, and the next option will be importing a DXF. Now this is a also a new feature uh, that is specifically aimed at bodybuilders to allow them to import their own bodies for which they already have CAD drawings, like a DXF drawing. So I'll choose a file from my desktop. I've got a tautliner body.dxf here, and I'll import this into the software. The advantage being, uh, that it has the correct graphics. If there are any items that we don't support that are in the, in the file, we'll simply truncate it. So, but basically we require a fairly simple DXF drawing that's two dimensional and less than one megabyte in size. We then allow you to run through a wizard that helps you set it up. So the first step will be to place it at the zero, zero. Then we'll go next. We can adjust the length, for example. We can rescale that. Let's make it a 7.2 meter body. Uh, and we'll make the width 2.6 meters. Okay. Next, add the body mass at 2,000. I'm just skipping over most of the attributes for now. Next, we'll give it a description, maybe port liner 1, and save and add that. So that'll add the body to the chassis with the actual graphic from the DXF. So it obviously provides a very uh, professional looking drawing and has advantages as such. I'll just go back to full screen. A nice feature now for bodybuilders is to actually advertise their products to other users of our software. I'll show you how that works. So clicking on the body again, there's an option here to save this body. You can give it a description. We can save it to either a personal library or the team library. So personal library means only you will have access to that item. If you choose the team library, all your colleagues will also have access to it. And then you can also allow the wider truck science community to reuse this body. So this is the opportunity to advertise your body. If you're a bodybuilder, if you are a dealer and you're talking to your bodybuilders, I suggest that you uh, recommend this feature to them, make them aware of it, because it will make it easier for truck salespeople to do mass distribution calculations if they can simply pick the body uh, from a specific bodybuilder. Okay, that's fine. We'll move that to the team library. Do you wish to continue? Yes. And we've submitted the request. Uh, to have it published to the to all the other users. Yes, okay, we're happy with that. 
All right, so that's that's our imported graphic. The last option I'll show you is the template. So I'll remove this body and go back to Tortliner and go to templates. So under template bodies here, we have two options. RTD, that's Royal Truck Bodies, um, a curtain side template, or a Tortliner template. The advantage of using the one from Royal Truck Bodies is that it already has their default body mass per running meter. So for this calculation, I'll pick that body and I'll show you that. So I had a meeting with Royal Truck Bodies where they explained some of the features of their uh, new tort liner. So one of them is a very light body mass. So I'll go to the body mass. And you'll see this body has a mass of 190 kilograms per running meter. Having a look at our, our guidelines here, you'll notice that for an aluminium body with a standard floor, we normally give a default of 260. So 190 is a fair bit lighter and obviously an advantage in terms of being able to carry more, more payload. So this is, this is a very important um, discussion to have with your bodybuilder, is to ensure that the body uh, mass is correct. So even if, even if you're using our guidelines or the bodybuilder's guidelines here, always uh, check that uh, to confirm that that will be the correct weight given the length, the height, and the width of your body. Let's change a few other uh, dimensions of the body. So I'll go back to the dimensions tab. So you'll notice now uh, that we can change length, height, and width, which was not possible with the standard body uh, provided by the many, by the body builder. So we have a lot more flexibility here. Let's change our body length to 7200. Again, you'll find a lookup uh, for body length with some handy guidelines. So available chassis length, maximum body length, that would again be 60% of wheelbase for rear overhang, and the optimum body length. You note the optimum body length is quite short, uh, we obviously want a certain body length for our product, so we will specify 7.2 meters. The height of the body, um, I'll specify height of 2,600. If you prefer to specify the internal height, you'll see if I'll show that. By default, we specify the external height, which includes the roof thickness and the substructure. If you prefer to specify internal height, you can toggle to internal, and you'll see the height is 2450, which you'll also see on the drawing. So there are a lot of uh, options for you to make it easier for you to specify your values. The width, we'll make the width 2.6 meters. That should be everything for the body. Remember, if you wanted to change the position, you could drag the body or you can go to position to change it. I'll close this form, have a look at our body. We're happy with our body. Our uh, mass table at the bottom is starting to populate, the body weight, total unladen and some payload. But remember, we still need to add the fairing and the tail lift. So we have about seven tons at the moment. Let's see how that changes when we add more equipment. I'll select the equipment menu, fairing, and I'll pick a sample fairing or nose cone of medium size. It will be placed at the top of the body. That looks good. Then we still want to add our tail lift, which will also be on the equipment. I'll click on add to add more equipment here. And then I'll choose tail lift. So you'll notice we also have a lot of different equipment options that we cater for. And if you don't find something, look, please remember to look for it under other. So under tail lift and in general for equipment, you'll have exactly the same options as for body. You'll have templates, you have your personal and team library and item, items that are in the public library. So for this uh, scenario, we'll just use an item from the public library. You'll see we've got a lot of tail lifts in here from Antio, uh, Bear, Dolandia, or you can type into the search. Let's search for Dolandia. We'll pick this first tail lift. 
in the list, 295 kilograms, and place it, it'll be placed at the back of the body. So the tail lift adds 295 kilograms, adds quite a lot to the rear axle because of the long rear overhang. So our payload has now been reduced to almost six and a half tons only. To show you how we do the payload calculation, I'll click on payload to open the menu. By default, we have a simple payload. The simple payload, you'll see in the graphic, is the payload there. So we assume a uniformly distributed load or water level load. And based on that, we can only carry six and a half tons. The reason being, the rear axle is the limiting factor. And that is also indicated by the blue highlighting on the rear axle, where you see the overload is zero. So the rear axle is limiting, whereas the front axle still has about two and a half tons of spare carrying capacity. So how do we get more utilization out of this vehicle? Let's try a few different things. We can maybe override the payload, change that to 8,000 kilograms, because we believe this to be an eight tonner. So we want to see if we can carry eight tons. Immediately, you'll notice an overload on the rear axle, and the scorecard will indicate that overload. We can go to the warnings on the right, notes and warnings. Just to read up on that, we can go to the warnings tab. One or more axles or axle groups are overloaded. So we show a lot of notes that are important information, and then we show the warnings on a separate tab. To correct that overload, I'll show you a few different uh, options. Uh, for starters, we could move uh, the payload slightly further forward. So if the load was not a uniformly distributed load, we could move it forward and by changing the horizontal center of gravity. So by default, it's 50%. So I'll pin that so I can see the center of gravity. I'll move it forward till it's about 35% of the internal body length. And now we've, we don't have an overload on the back axis. So I'll just increase it slightly again. You notice a small overload. And as I move it forward, more, more load goes onto the front axle and all the axles and total are now legal. Another way to demonstrate this uh, loading pattern would be to use the detailed payload option because this might not be practical uh, to load the body in this way. So you may want to just go through a, an actual uh, example of what that might look like. So I'll toggle from simple payload to detailed payload. Again, we can add template, uh, a template item that we can manipulate, something from the public library. And in this case, under the, my personal library, I've added a, a bank of pallets that weigh 8,000 kilograms. And these pallets are not utilizing the full length of the body. So only utilizing about five meters of the body, 8,000 kilograms. And that would give us the same effect of having the center of gravity quite far forward so that we don't overload the rear axle. If we drag those pallets back, you'll notice it will overload the back axle again. To undo that, you can just undo and leave the pallets at the front. All right, then maybe a good time now to show you the top view. On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see there's a, there are quite a few different view options. I'll toggle from side view to top view to show you what that load, the payload can be moved laterally across the deck. So we'll move it to the middle. We can toggle that back to the side view. Okay, if we cannot load the vehicle in this way, we would need to go back to a uniformly distributed load. And for that, I will toggle my payload, go back to payload and toggle back to a simple payload. And change the center of gravity back to 50%. Instead of an eight ton payload, in this scenario, where we're utilizing the full length of the body, we will allow the payload to be maximized, so we won't override it. We'll deselect the override, 
and go back to the maximum payload of six and a half tons. Yeah, just to show you a few more of the views on the right. Uh, the default view is always the overview, the summary of the overview. There's an option for fuel and crew, which gives you a detailed breakdown of the fuel and crew that gets added to the chassis mass. The bridge view shows the, the maximum weight that you can carry over a certain distance over the axles. This is mostly applicable to 8x4 vehicles, rigid vehicles like tippers and mixers, and also 6x4 truck tractors and trident trailers. Center of gravity view gives you a technical report on all the center of gravities on the different items. You can click the center, the symbols on and off to show the dimension. So you want to see the exact dimension from the rear axle and from the ground, you can click that or click it again to remove that. Turning circle. This is also a new feature that wasn't available in Transolf. If we have a look at the smallest turning circle, smallest turning circle is with the maximum inner steering angle and curb to curb, that will be 9.4 meters to the outer edge of the tire. The regulation turning radius is 13 and 13.1 meters. So this vehicle can easily turn inside the regulation uh, wheelbase uh, radius. Side view and top view, we've already covered. Side view, top view, and then notes and warnings. Let's just have another look at notes and warnings. Any changes to wheelbase or rear overhang would be noted here. So please, please have a look at the notes and warnings. What we could also do, um, if we wanted to carry eight tons of payload, I want to show you one more option here in terms of wheelbase changes. So I'll go back to uh, a payload of 8,000 kilograms. And to see how we can carry that, we might opt for a longer wheelbase. So by increasing the wheelbase, we could get more weight transfer onto the front axle. So again, I'll change the wheelbase. I'll just use those tickers. And you'll notice as I increase the wheelbase, the overload on the rear axle decreases and more weight goes onto the front axle. Okay, that's one option. Another option would be to say, well, if we don't want to change the wheelbase of this particular vehicle, is there an option in the database for a longer wheelbase as a standard wheelbase? So we'll go back to the default here. So we've added an option on the vehicle menu to swap the vehicle. Swapping the vehicle allows you to keep the body and the equipment and simply swap this for a vehicle with a longer wheelbase. So for example, we might take a Dino uh, 1627, a super long wheelbase, and the code will be the EM5. So we'll pick that vehicle and it will just swap the chassis cab. Yes, we want to complete the change and put the new chassis with the longer wheelbase underneath the body and equipment. Obviously, this vehicle has a much longer rear overhang, which we can align with the body. There's a nice feature on the body where we can align the body to the rear of the chassis. Clicking on that checkbox will cut it off. That would be a fairly good solution. You probably need to make sure that there's enough uh, clearance here between the suspension of the vehicle and the tail lift. But this looks like a much better balanced vehicle and gives a much higher payload. So this gives us almost eight tons of payload, 7.7. .7. We'll move on to the next module now, which is the performance module. But before we do that, I'll swap the vehicle for a more generic vehicle because we don't want, because we have uh, dealers from different manufacturers participating. So we'll go for a generic vehicle. I'll swap that again. Or may, maybe something just to highlight before I swap it, it's always a good idea to save your calculation. So I'll save this and I'll give it my own description. I'll call it uh, 7.2 uh, 7 liter port liner. And then I'll swap, swap it for another vehicle. So I'll go back to vehicle, swap. And we'll look for a sample 
Sofa Eitana. Sofa Eitana. Just to be more generic when it comes to the fuel consumption and the costing. Here's our sample eight tonner, and this vehicle can carry, also carry about seven and a half tons of payload. So we're happy with our load distribution, and we'll move on to the performance module. Okay, in the performance module, uh, if you compare this to Transolf, you'll notice that we've merged the routing and the performance modules into one module here. So the map is always in the background, and we can move it up and down, zoom in. And on the left, we have the menu where we can specify the vehicle uh, input values, for example, to total unladen. Uh, we can override that, but the, the default is already calculated for us. It is uh, linked to the unladen weight in the configuration module. Same applies to the frontal area. It's already calculated for us based on the height of the, and the width of the body. Um, we can override it if we wanted to. Coefficient of drag is also already the default value. Drive acceleration can only be changed by uh, product engineers. Maximum speed is limited to 80. Trailer um, masses can be changed if uh, we have trailers. And then the waypoints. So that'll be the first thing we'll need to do now is to specify a route. So I'll start off by searching for, let's say we take a route from Boxburg. And then Boxburg, so we add a waypoint in Boxburg where we'll load, say, 7,000 kilograms. And then the next waypoint, search for waypoint, will be Midrand. Midrand. And Midrand will offload, uh, let's make it three and a half tons. And then we'll do another drop in, say, Randburg. We'll add Randburg. And we'll offload the remaining three and a half tons. So we, all we need to do now is actually click on Simulate. So I could close this or click on Simulate. Program will prompt us, do you wish to return to the start point, just like Transolf? Because you'll notice we've got from Boxburg to Midrand, Midrand to Randburg, but now we still want to go back. So yes, we want to return. That will complete the route and give us our simulation results. So the average speed, 46 kilometers per hour. Average fuel consumption, 23 and a half liters per 100. CO2 emissions and the productivity factor which is the payload in tons multiplied by the average speed divided by the average fuel consumption. So the higher the payload and the lower the fuel consumption, the, the better the productivity factor. A good value to you, you to look at when comparing two vehicles for the same application. The route profile has a handy feature at the bottom where you can move the mouse over the route profile to see the altitude. And you'll notice on the map, it indicates the point along the route. Another feature you've got here is in terms of adding waypoints is you can also manually add waypoints. So if we wanted to force this route via the Western Bypass, we could zoom in here and add a waypoint on the highway by double clicking on the road and then force the route to go via that point. And then, but what we would want to do here is now reorder that. So we go back to waypoints because that waypoint gets added as the last waypoint. So we've got these up and down options here and also the, the delete for the waypoints. So I'll move that bypass, Western Bypass to the second to last waypoint by just moving it up one. And that'll give me a, more, a, a route along the highway if I prefer this option. All I need to do now is simulate that again and the results change ever so slightly. All right, then we'll move on to the costing module. Okay, we've, we've given careful thought to the new design or layout of the costing module when compared to Transolf. Um, we've removed a lot of attributes that we felt were unnecessary in determining an accurate costing. And, as, and the, the main emphasis was on making it simple to use and uh, yeah, simple for 
especially truck salespeople, but also for operators to get to a very accurate figure without having to input too many values. So we've got a few favorites here, um, and then the fixed costs, variable costs, and total costs. On the right-hand side, we've got a dashboard which shows you cost per kilometer, profit per month, and a bar graph showing you the detailed breakdown. So finance being one of the main cost items, and crew and fuel also being big items. To make uh, changes to a specific application or operation, we can uh, simply type in a value, for example, for the utilization of the vehicle. We can use the slider and maybe change that to 5,000 kilometers per month. For the fuel price, we could maybe type in a value. Let's say it's a given rent, uh, get wholesale, and the fuel price is obviously on a reducing trend at the moment. So we do update that regularly when the price changes. For fixed costs, uh, for the finance of the vehicle, you'll see there's an override option here and a detail button. So there are two methods we're providing here. You can either uh, just override this value or use the detail button to do a more detailed breakdown. I'll show you the detailed breakdown here where you can specify the price of the vehicle, the body, the fairing, and the tail lift individually, uh, finance them individually, have individual residual values if you need it. So there's a lot of flexibility here for you. For this calculation, I will just override this. So I'll just specify a simple value of, let's say, a million rand. And we'll find it over 60 months at prime 7.75. And we'll give it a residual value. Now, for the residual value, um, I've often had feedback from users saying they prefer not to specify residual value because uh, it may give the indication that there's a guaranteed buyback. Uh, this should not be the case. This is simply for costing purposes where we're trying to calculate the lowest cost per month or per kilometer, and the vehicle will have a residual value. So this is not necessarily the way the vehicle will be financed, but to give an indication of the true cost of the vehicle to this operation. So I like to put in a, a small residual value there. You can obviously leave it at, at zero. Uh, crew wages, um, insurance as a percentage of capital cost, license fees. The license fees are also linked to the licensing mass in the configuration module and the province. You can change the province to your province and you'll even see the date when that was effective. So 1st of April this year. We won't change that. Overheads, we specify a default of 10% of fixed costs. If you have a very large fleet and a very uh, efficient operation, this could be as low as maybe 5%. You have a small fleet of vehicles with very high management, uh, or, or that's management intensive, that could be as high as 20%. So for this calculation, we'll leave that at, let's say, 10%. Fuel. The fuel consumption links to the performance module. Remember, it was just over 23 liters per 100. If we want to be a bit more conservative, we can just override that to 24 liters per 100. Tires. We've simplified this quite a bit from Transolf. So we just, uh, we're specifying average cost per tire and average life per tire. If you have ever done this calculation on Transolf, you'll, you'll recognize that this will be a lot easier to do. So average cost per tire on the front axle, 3,700 Rand, average cost in the rear, just under 2,000 Rand for retreads, and then average life, front average life of a tire on the rear axle, 22.9 cents per kilometer. Maintenance of the vehicle, you'll need to get in touch with obviously the truck manufacturer or the banks if uh, you can get a maintenance contract. Let's say for this vehicle, the manufacturer offers maintenance contract at, at 50 cents per kilometer. Toll fees. This is one of the features that we're working on in uh, the next sort of update. We will also link this to the route in the performance module. But for now, we'll just type in the value. Let's say it will be 2,000 Rand per month. 
So if you notice any features that you're missing from Transoff, please uh, raise them with us. A good way to raise this type of thing with us would be to use the chat option in the bottom right corner. And I'll do that quickly to give you a, a, a demonstration of this. So I'll start a new conversation and I'll say, how uh, do I get the call fix? I'll send that off and somebody in support will get notified and hopefully reply to me. So obviously, uh, that and, and if we if if we see that there's a feature of Transolve that you still need in the new version that we haven't migrated, we'll make a note of that, and we prioritize features that we add to the new version by the number of people who request the same feature. So please um, make us aware of anything that's important or critical to you. Okay, then you'll notice. Okay, so we have a re reply coming soon here. So we're working on a reply there. So I'll just wait for that. I can close this pop up so it doesn't obscure the screen. At the top right on the dashboard, our total cost is just under 12 Rand a kilometer. Our profit is 10,000 Rand. That's based on the total revenue of 13 Rand 86. If our customer is prepared to share their rate with us, or let's say they want to charge 15 Rand a kilometer, then the profit will be 16,000 Rand per month. All right, I'll just uh, check with Jens if there are any questions maybe on the costing module. So there's been a there's um, been a request there for us to remember to add the other tab under costs. Um, so uh, I suppose other costs for fixed and variable. So we'll make a note of that. Um, and. There's a question there about, about residual under fixed cost um, that Patrick has asked about, um, or he can't see the residual under fixed cost. And, and that could be because he hasn't overridden the finance cost. Is that possible? Uh, yes, so if we don't override that, okay, let's, let's just go, if, if you use the detailed finance calculator, then you won't see the residual value on this screen. So to, then, then you could specify the residual value on the detailed uh, finance screen. And if you want to specify it on the main worksheet, uh, just click on the override and those three finance um, attributes will pop out. Okay, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. that's it for now. Okay. Then the specification comparison module. Okay. We've got our base vehicle right now is the sample eight tonner, and we've got the different categories of items here. So this is exactly the same data as Transolve. Uh, it's just that the interface is slightly different and we've had quite a few requests to actually just keep all this data expanded so that you can just do a long vertical scroll. So that is something we are also implementing soon. But for now, you can just look at one section at a time. Let's pick a competitor at the top right. So remember we had the Hino, it was model code EK5. That was the first competitor and maybe the second competitor could be an Isuzu. So it just takes a few seconds to retrieve that data from the database. Let's open on the mass section. I'll add one more here and I'll add the FDR 850. Select the AMT. Then we can do a side by side comparison of the weights. The, maybe under engine, we can compare power and torque and scroll down to vehicle price and the date. Now, the vehicle price and date is something we're working hard on at the moment to, to get updated. A price list from all the manufacturers, and then we will release an update for those. If there's a vehicle that you're looking for in the drop down that uh, you could, or that you can't find in the drop down, so let's say, for example, we are looking for a VW uh, vehicle here, and you scroll all, all the way down and you don't see it, it might be that that vehicle is not 
in the same class as these vehicles by default. For example, um, we have, say, so for, for this uh, vehicle, we're calling this an eight tonner. So you might want to include under these filter options here. So in the subcategory two, where it says eight tonner, I'm also going to include nine tonners. So I'm going to compare all eight tonners and nine tonners. That will then give me a longer list of vehicles to pick from. And you'll see right at the bottom of the list, you'll find that VW. So keep that in mind. If you're not finding a vehicle from a competitor that you think should be compared to your vehicle, that you may just need to expand this uh, subcategory two to include more options there, maybe even seven ton. So you can normally go up or down one class to find the vehicle that you're looking for. All right, any questions on the specification module? Okay, we've got another 10 minutes left in our session to take us to the top of the hour. We'd like to leave another five minutes or so for questions in the end. And I've still got a few slides to go through. So I'll move on to the next option here, which is the preview. Yes. Just before you move on there, Martin, um, there's a question there about whether we can still see discontinued models. Um, and the answer to that is yes, you can. Um, okay, so I'll show you that. So under current, you can include discontinued here, or you can only show discontinued for that matter. And you'll probably recognize some of these Euro cargos, the old MAN M2000. So all the discontinued models are here. And you can even open those vehicles to do a calculation. Like if you needed to do a, a load distribution, you can, uh, under the filters on the, on the vehicle selection screen, you can also pick discontinued vehicles. Okay. All right. Then I'll move on to the preview. Okay. The preview generates a PDF. It's, it's a single document with all the pages from all the modules. Um, and I'll just populate a few attributes on the left here. Additional description, we could say uh, 7.2 meter talk liner, for example. Add that to the description. Prepared for, we can say Mr. P. Smith. And phone number, we can specify as well. And then we can decide which pages of the report to include and exclude. So by default, we only include the mass distribution estimate, which has the summary and then all the details um, for the center of gravity of and weights of the individual items, plus the notes and warnings. If you don't want the technical information for weights and center of gravity, you can deselect that. But yes, we do want performance, costing, and specification. And then to update our PDF, we need to just uh, um, click on the update option to generate a new PDF. Just takes a few seconds to put together all the right pages that we requested. You'll also notice that there's a, pla a placeholder at the top left for your logo. So for bodybuilders, uh, you, you can put your logo here. For dealers, it's often the logo of your, your uh, brand that goes there, um, but there is flexibility for that. There's a nice sign off on the report, so prepared by, prepared for, and your customer can actually sign off uh, acceptance of, of the calculation. Once we've generated all the pages that we want in our report, we can print this uh, straight to the printer, download it as a PDF. This might be the most common option because you might, may want to download that to your desktop and then attach it to an email that you're going to send out. I'll just show you what the PDF looks like. So you can open it up in a PDF viewer. There's your PDF document, which you can attach to an email. Or you can email it directly from the portal in our software. Okay, then just going through some of the last few options and settings, we can save this. I'll save this as to give it a new description as well. Okay, we will actually already save that one. 
and we've kept our original amino. We'll click OK and save that. We can even share this calculation. This is uh, uh, quite handy if you want to have one of your colleagues review your calculation or share it with the bodybuilder. For example, if I share it with Jens Halberg, my colleague, and I can put some comments in here, uh, please review this calculation. Get back to me on the body mass. Is that the correct body mass that you, the bodybuilder, uh, can, can uh, produce? And then click on Invite Now. And your bodybuilder or colleague will then be able to open that calculation. They'll get notified by email. We've covered all these other options, full screen settings. There are a few options under settings. For example, you can change your default licensing province. So some of your preferences you can change the measurement system and the regulation is default to South Africa. To select a new vehicle, we re I recommend that you click on the home icon. We've noticed that quite a few of our users have uh, closed the browser, uh, thinking that they need to go, uh, log into the app again. So if you need to start an, a completely new calculation, click on home. That will take you back to the vehicle selection screen where we can reset our filters and select a new vehicle. Or we can go down to my save calculations where we'll find our sample eight tonner or uh, which we can just open again. And the calculation will open exactly as we'd saved it. So with our body and our route. All right, if there are no more questions about the app, Jens, then I'll go back to the... To Sorry, the Martin. Uh, yeah. Before you go back there, um, there are the two questions. The, the first one is, um, how do we change? How do you change the logo on the PDF? And and the answer to that is the 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 logo. The support team will change the logo for you. Uh, but any any existing customers, any existing Transolve customers, will have their correct logo already set up. Um, so so there's no need to worry about that. Um, the second question is around um, uh, the prepared by uh, field, and the question is, can it be updated or changed? Um, and the answer to that is, uh, it will also, you know, if, if your details have changed, um, you're welcome to get in touch with the, with a support team and they can update your phone number or, or whatever the case may be. You can do that by getting in touch on the, on the chat there, which is probably the best way of getting, uh, getting hold of us. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it can be that we've made a spelling mistake with your name. So please make sure that we have your correct details there. Okay, thank you. Um, what we'll do now is we'll go back to our presentation. And just run through a lot a uh, few slides. Okay, we've done the live demo. Okay, so um, what we've covered in short, we've shown you how to configure your vehicle with uh, body payload and equipment, and ensuring that you keep within the legal dimensions and masses. Uh, we've estimated fuel consumption and trip time by running a simulation. We've determined a total cost per kilometer for a specific application, and we've done some competitor comparisons. In general, uh, we've shown you how to use uh, the, the software and get the most out of all the available features. Uh, what, what next? Uh, we recommend that after the session, you log into the app straight away. Um, if, if you don't have a license yet, you're welcome to register for a free trial. So either way, if you log or register, uh, there's nothing to install. Um, it, you'll be up and running in less than a minute. And like Jens said, if you have not yet received your login details and you're still using Transolf, then please get in touch with us. Uh, via support at trucksigns.com or via the chat, and we'll uh, send you your login details again um, and just help you to get up and running. And then the last slide here, uh, we'd really love to uh, get feedback from you. Um, so if you have any suggestions on how we can improve the app 
or what features we should be adding next, um, please pop those through in the chat and we'll prioritize them accordingly. We'd also uh, like to hear your feedback about this webinar. Um, if there are any changes or improvements we can make to the webinar itself, uh, we'd gladly take your feedback on that. Um, we are planning um, another webinar, probably in June, which will include a, a, an example with trailers. But if there's something else that you'd like to cover, uh, maybe a particular feature of that, or a, a, a typical transport scenario, you're welcome to, to send us your suggestions. We'll probably do more of these uh, sessions in the future as well. What we'll do now is I'll still leave the se session open if there are any more questions. Sorry, Otherwise, what, yeah. Sorry, there is a, there is another question there. Um, the question is when you um, when you email the PDF from within the app, um, can you attach anything else? And and Transolve uh, Transolve prevents you from attaching anything else. Um, and maybe you can just swing back to the app quickly. And, and I suppose demonstrate the option to download as a PDF uh, to a and, and then you can attach it separately outside of there. You can attach it separately to your own email and then obviously attach anything you like. Yeah, okay. So just looking at the our email portal. So yes, you cannot add another attachment. So it only attaches the calculation. So if you need to attach multiple um, documents to your email, you, you would download it first, download it to, to your desktop or to downloads, and then uh, attach it manually to your email. So I think I, I already did, did demonstrate that. So the download option is, is your best option, and, the, and that's the PDF. Okay, any other questions about the app whilst I'm here, or shall we go back to the presentation? It, it looks like there aren't any questions uh, at the moment. Okay, so um, what we'll do now is I'll end this uh, webinar shortly. Um, as soon as I end it, you will be prompted to provide some feedback, just a very quick uh, uh, feedback on how you rate the session. And then any further feedback that you'd like to give us, you can do from inside the app um, using the chat. So. I'll just wait to see if there's any more, if there are any more questions. It doesn't look like it. All right, so I will end the webinar here. Thank you once again for joining us. And uh, we really look forward to, to hearing from you. And please uh, keep well and stay safe during this uh, ch challenging time. Goodbye.